In this video, we're going to look at how to add and multiply together two unsigned binary integers. If you're not too sure what an unsigned binary integer is, check out our previous video. OK, so let's start by adding together the base 10 decimal numbers 89 and 23 and storing the result in unsigned binary. So there's several things to note on the screen here first, and this is a good idea to lay out your working like this in the exam. The first thing we've got is the base 2 binary waiting line, which you remember starts at 1, and every time we move to the left, we multiply by 2. So we go 1, 2, 4, 8, all the way up to 128. Now the first thing we have to do is write out the numbers 89 and 23 in binary underneath the waiting line before we can add them together. So we looked at how to do this in the last video, so if you're not sure, go back and check. But the number 89 in binary is 0, 128s, 164, 0, 32s, a 16, an 8, no 4s, no 2s and a 1. And of course you can confirm that by adding together the 64, the 16, the 8 and the 1 and checking you've got 89. We do the same thing for 23 and we get 0, 0, 0, we get 1 16, 0 8, and a 4, and a 2, and a 1. 16 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 is 23. Now I've lined all these binary digits up, we have to count them up underneath each other. Now we do this exactly in the same way that you'd add up uh, two normal base 10 numbers. So we start on the right hand side, and we take 1 and 1, and we add those together. Well, of course, in base 10 decimal, 1 and 1 is 2, but we can't have a 2 in binary. As we know, in binary, 2 is 1, 0. So 1, 0 means a 0 goes here, and we have to carry the 1. So it's a really good idea in the exam to show the carry line, just like when you're adding up uh, normal decimal numbers. So now we move to the next column, the 2 column. We've got a 0 and a 1 and a 1. 1 and 1 is 2, or 1, 0 in binary. So again, it's 0, carry the 1. 0, 1 and 1 is 0, carry the 1. 1, 0 and 1 is 0, carry the 1. Now we've got 1, 1 and 1. Of course, 1, 1 and 1 is 3. Now, we can't have 3 in binary. We have 1, 1. So, we put a 1 down and we carry a 1. 0, 0 and 1 is 1. 1, 0 is 1. 0 and 0 is 0. So, we've added up our two binary numbers. And if we look at the corresponding number here, we have a 64 plus a 32 plus a 16 is 112. And so it's a good idea to lay your arithmetic out like this in the exam, showing the carry bits as they will most likely be marks, even if you make a mistake somewhere. Let's try one more. So let's add together the base 10 decimal numbers 200 and 100 and store the result as an unsigned binary integer. So again, we have to write out the numbers 200 and 100. Now you can double check this, but I'm just going to write them out. We've got 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. And we've got 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. So let's add these together in the same way. 0 and 0 is a 0. 0 and 0 is 0. 0 and 1 is a 1. 1 and 0 is a 1. A 0 and 0 is a 0. A 0 and 1 is a 1. A 1 and 1 is 2, which is 1, 0. So that's 0, carry the 1. And 1, 0 and 1, again, is 1, 0. So that's 0. And then we've got an issue, because we're only allowed to store in 8 bits. Now, technically, there would be another carry 1. What's happened here is we've got overflow. So although the number 200 and the number 100 
can both easily be stored in 8 bits, because remember 8 bits can store values up to 255. The resulting calculation of 200 plus 100 is obviously 300. Well, 300 is too big to be stored in here. This is why we get this overflow. So we actually couldn't do this arithmetic in 8 bits. If we had a ninth bit, then this column here would be 256. Then we'd have a 256 here, plus a 32, plus an 8, plus a 4, and we'd have 300. We look at a bit more overflow and underflow in a video later on in this section. Now we're going to look at how to multiply together um, unsigned binary numbers. Now there are several methods you can use to do this, and I'm going to show you one which I think is uh, quite simple. So if we think about our normal decimal numbers, we have our timeline 1, 10, 100, etc, etc. And if I write the number 300 underneath, 3 hundreds, and if I shift this number one place to the left, so I end up with 3 here, 0 here, 0 here, and then a 0 here. By shifting this whole number to the left one place, what I have done, obviously, is times the number by 10. Because as we're in base 10, every time we move to the left, we multiply by 10. We can do a similar thing in binary, although this time, every time we shift the number to the left, we obviously multiply by 2. Let's have a look at an example. So here I'm going to multiply together the base 10 decimal numbers 24 and 8 and store the result as an unsigned binary. So first of all, I take the multiple can. So that's the number I'm wanting to uh, times 24. And I write 24 out here. So that's 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. And then obviously I've got the multiplier. Well, the multiplier is 8, which is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. Because we are multiplying by 8, that means this multiple and is going to have to be shifted three places to the left. Because to go from 1, we go 1, 2, 3. And when we shift the number three places to the left, we multiply by 8. So if I do that, and I move these numbers, you can see I've already put the arrows in ahead of time, and I write out 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, I end up with 128 and 164, which is 192, 24 times 8. Well, what about when we want to multiply a number by, say, 10? Obviously, we don't have a 10 on our waiting line here. We've got 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, but I don't have 10. So it's not quite as simple as writing the number out and then shifting it by a number of columns. But of course, I do have columns for 8 and 2. So I'll start off in the same way, and I will write out the multiplicand of 24. So that's the same as before. It's 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. And then we'll just write out the multiplier of 10, which obviously is 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. So what I need to do is add together the multipliers of 8 and 2. So we'll start by shifting this number three places to the left to get the multiplier for it times by 8. So... This might get a little bit messy on the diagram, but obviously we're going to end up with 0, 0, 0. And then this first 0 here is going to be shifted three places to the left. 0. This one's going to be placed three places to the left. 0. And if I carry on in that fashion, I end up with 0 and then 1, 1. Now, when we read this number out, we have 190. Two. So that is 24 times by 8. Well, I need 24 times by 10, so I need to do the same thing, but shift the number using the 2 multiplier. So this time we're only going to have to shift one place. So we're going to take this naught, 
and we're going to shift it one place to the left. This naught is going to go one place to the left. And if I proceed in that fashion, I end up with this here. And when I add 32 and 16 together, I have 48. So just to recap, I couldn't multiply by 10 initially, but I can indeed multiply by 8 by shifting 24 three places to the left. Then multiply by 2 by shifting 24 one place to the left, and you've probably guessed what's coming next. Now I just perform normal binary arithmetic. So 0 and 0 is 0, 0 and 0 is 0, 0, 0, 0 and 1 is a 1, 0 and 1 is a 1, 1 and 0 is a 1, 1 and 0 is a 1. And if I add together 128, 64, 32 and 16, I get 240, which of course is 24 times 10.